Today, crypto markets soar as the value of the US dollar sinks. Celsius CEO Alex Mashinsky resigns. And FTX pays $1.4 billion for Voyager Digital's assets. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Tanea McKeel. Digital currencies adding to yesterday's gains. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin rose to $19,000, Ether rallied to $1,300, and Solana jumped to 34 bucks. Today's gains coincide with a rally in tech stocks, of which cryptocurrencies have been tightly correlated. At the same time, the value of the US dollar is falling, which is giving a boost to risky assets. OK, let's talk about the top stories. First, Celsius CEO Alex Mashinsky has resigned, effective immediately. Mashinsky submitted his resignation in the midst of the company's bankruptcy proceedings, but he'll continue to help the company provide creditors with the best outcome. In his resignation, Mashinsky said, quote, I regret that my continued role as CEO has become an increasing distraction, and I'm very sorry about the difficult financial circumstances members of our community are facing. Celsius suspended customer withdrawals and filed for bankruptcy back in July after the crypto crash, and the company has explored unconventional ways to pay back customers, including IOU tokens. Next, FTX is scooping up the assets of bankrupt crypto lender Voyager Digital. The U.S. subsidiary of Sam Bankman frieds crypto exchange was picked as the highest bidder of Voyager's assets to the tune of $1.4 billion. Of course, SBF has been propping up struggling crypto businesses with emergency funding and, in some cases, acquiring them outright. At the same time, the U.S. president of FTX is stepping down. Brett Harrison announced on Twitter he'll transfer into an advisory role for the company over the next few months. Finally, crypto lender Nexo just bought a bank to get a U.S. banking charter. The Swiss company announced it has taken a stake in Hewlett Bancor, which owns Summit National Bank. Through Summit, Nexo said it plans to offer products like checking accounts and crypto-backed loans. The announcement came a day after eight U.S. states sued Nexo, claiming the company offered interest-earning accounts without registering them as securities or providing disclosures. The lawsuits also claim Nexo made customers believe it was licensed when it wasn't. All right, on to our main story. Gemini is partnering with digital investment advisor Betterment to offer curated crypto portfolios to customers, all with the goal of bringing in long-term investors. I spoke to Betterment's VP of crypto investing, Jesse Proudman, about the new portfolios, but also to get his take on the state of retail crypto investors. So Jesse, you're announcing this new product today within Betterment. Tell us about it and what it's gonna mean for retail investors. So today we're announcing a partnership with Gemini, who will act as our custodial provider for a Betterment crypto product that is coming uh, to market later this year. Uh, they will secure the assets on behalf of our clients and be the trade execution venue. So ultimately, what is this going to open the doors for your own customers to be able to do? So Betterment believes in investing choice uh, for our uh, customers, and we've seen demand from our client base for crypto uh, offerings. What we've come to recognize is that for most people, investing in crypto is too challenging. It's complicated, the industry moves too quickly, and quite frankly, it's scary. And so our objective is to simplify investing in this asset class and, and make it a similar experience that someone would get investing in, in any other uh, traditional investment. So what are you currently offering on the platform? Do you have the do you have single crypto buying, holding, selling? Um, and how is this partnership going to be different from that? Yeah, so today there are no crypto offerings on the Betterment platform. Betterment's been researching crypto for a number of years and in 2021 decided to enter the space. They acquired uh, my company, Makara, in March. And so we've been working on the integration of that product into Betterment and the Betterment experience. And that launch will be uh, coming later this year. So this Gemini release is about the supporting functionality and capabilities that Gemini brings to that forthcoming Betterment crypto product. How would you describe Betterment's existing uh, customer base or investor base? Yeah, so the, the target Betterment investor is a 30-something millennial with a family. Um, and effectively, it's somebody who uh, is making investments for the long term, but is interested in spending their time elsewhere. They, they don't uh, want to spend all of their energy trying to understand everything that's happening in the world of, of finance or in crypto. And so they're trusting Betterment to help guide them through that experience and journey. And with that in mind, beyond this Gemini partnership, how, how do you see crypto moving into the platform 
long term and it's beyond the platform. Yeah, absolutely. So for, for those clients who are interested in crypto as uh, an option, and again, this is really important as part of our investing choice philosophy. This is not a sort of a required part of a, a client's portfolio. Clients get to opt in and choose to participate in this product. We wanted to, to make an offering that, that really makes investing in crypto similar to, to buying an index fund or a mutual fund. So we will have uh, an offering that includes four pre-built portfolios that are managed by the Betterment Investing Team. Uh, they are thematic in nature, so they uh, allow people to invest in specific topical areas of, of this asset class that they may be interested in. Uh, again, on that, that concept of choice, uh, and it simplifies that investing experience. Somebody doesn't have to go through and sort of pick individual assets. They pick kind of that whole thematic offering uh, without having to, to understand uh, really the nuances of each individual coin. What are some of the trends that you're noticing among retail investors right now? Crypto has uh, struggled this year like any other asset class. And it's interesting if you actually look at the returns of, of the broader crypto market and compare that to some of the returns in traditional equities markets, particularly around technology stocks or consumer product companies. Uh, crypto can look pretty decent. So I think the, the clients that we have been working with really are thinking about this in, in a long-term perspective. They're thinking about investing here because they're participating in sort of a transformational set of technology and not necessarily because they're expecting a sort of this, this get rich quick scheme uh, or a magical sort of change in, in performance. So the opportunity here is to participate in a set of technology uh, from an early opportunity, from, from its earliest stages, and, and to do so thinking about sort of a five or 10 year horizon, whether the price is high or low, like, honestly, I think clients right now are more interested in investing in this asset class than they were back uh, when, when the price was high because of the, the opportunity ahead of them. What do you think the role of institutions is in the crypto market at the moment? And how do you see it changing, uh, you know, now, going into the last quarter of 2022 and through the next year. Yeah, it's it's funny. I've been in this asset class since 2017, and I remember that the 2018 drumbeat that institutions were, were coming and they were going to save the space. Uh, here we are sort of years later, uh, and, and you're right. They are here. The institutions have arrived. And ultimately, I think the institutions are bringing sort of that, that regulatory oversight. So these are entities and organizations that have the capacity and capability uh, to build regulated products, uh, to guide the regulators on the best way to uh, to run these, uh, to run the regulation within this asset class, um, and so I think it's a it's a net positive uh, for the asset class. It's not sort of a, a binary switch where their involvement in the asset class uh, saves everything or drives the the price up, but it's really in, in my eyes, it's about driving legitimacy and driving the, the mainstream adoption of of this technology. And we do that through uh, the participation by more and more parties. So as, as more and more of these entities and organizations uh, enter and provide different types of services, whether it's custodial services or trading services or, or investment services, that just continues to create additional avenues uh, and opportunities for people to participate and, and to benefit from the, the broader asset class. Final thing, a couple of times in the last couple of weeks, we've seen the price of Bitcoin specifically, and you know, Bitcoin leads the crypto market, but we've seen the price of Bitcoin go up even with the sell-off in stocks. What do you make of that? Do you think that a decoupling is happening so soon? Um, and regardless, how, how long do you see us being kind of stuck in the macro led market yeah you know i think the most interesting thing to me here has been sort of the, the impact the dollar has had on all risk assets and so if you if you uh, chart sort of the the dollar uh, strength of the dollar against bitcoin one to one you can definitely see a correlation particularly over the last number of months in that strength impacting investors appetite for these risk assets at some point, I think that that has to change. So when that happens I, is anybody's guess. Uh, but that's, a, I think, a, a sort of a key area that, that we've been focused on uh, and been paying attention to. So sort of at, at what point does uh, sort of the, the dollar's New York rise uh, slow down and, and sort of how does that impact and adjust investors' risk appetites for, for these, uh, these types of assets? Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow. So we'll see you then.